think it's absolutely incredible uh, to have young people come visit or within our congregation, um, actually young and not so young, uh, share their gifts. And I think that is an absolute gift and uh, thankful for you joining in with us today. And again, as we recall, Mike always willing to share his gift of song. Alex is with us who shares um, his gift as well. I would inspire and encourage you uh, to look within and ask yourself, what is it that God has given me uh, to share? And uh, it's not too late. It's not too early. Amen? Amen. 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 I am just thankful and excited to be before you again. Those of you who may not know, this is my ninth year of pastoral ministry. Um, and so this is not new to me, uh, but it's not less exciting. It just gets more and more exciting. I can't explain it. Some people call it a pastor's heart, whatever that is. I just know what it is and how it feels. Uh, it's something that I cannot um, undo or change. Does that make sense? <laughs> Amen. Um, I want to share just really quickly something that moved me deeply. Thank you, Susan, for bringing this today. Uh, but First Christian was on the front page of the Examiner recently, um, and I thought that that was really amazing to see our church um, on the front page, and the community looks at this appointment as something uh, pretty major, and I think we do too. So as the community continues to celebrate what we're doing at First Christian, let us be louder than them. Amen. Amen. Let's make it clear that we know what we're doing, amen, for this community, for the kingdom of heaven. Many people, many voices are watching and listening and speaking about what's happening. And First Christian um, is second to none when it comes to community engagement, a long-standing relationship in this community. Uh, so I am proud to be a part of that family. My family are proud to be a part of that family. Visiting guests and friends, thank you for joining in with us today. If you're visiting for the first time, can we just see you wave your hand so we can see who's brand new to the crew? All right, one, two, all right, wonderful, amen. This is probably not your first time, but you're still not a member, you're still visiting. Can you show us who you are? You're still kind of visiting, amen. Praise the Lord, amen, welcome. Feel right at home. Amen. Feel right at home. I am, again, elated to be before you this morning and very excited about June 2nd. Hope to see all of you there. Bring a friend. And I hope to see people in the balcony there. I think we will. Uh, this is a pretty interesting uh, opportunity. Amen? Amen. Sue Chirp, it is just a privilege to serve with you today. And it's just good to see you. Amen. Can we send just loads of love to the pulpit now? Can we just send it her way? Just keep going. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. We love you. We love you. And we thank God for your gift and all that you do. Amen. Amen. I am thrilled to share this word today. Amen. I've preached this before, but it's just like our Lord that gives me a new spin to things. <laughs> so test turned testimony. Oftentimes we have tests and experiences and we wonder, God, what in the world is this even for? So if you would please turn to Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. And... You have your words with you, right? Your Bible's with you. I mean, yeah, we haven't cast it before you, but thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Let me make it plain. A Christian without their Bible is like Batman without Robin. Okay, I'll get you with this one. It's like the Long Ranger without... Okay, all right, all right, all right. If I didn't get you there, I'll get you here. It's like strawberry shortcake without... We got some good people in here. 
<laughs> one last one. You ready? It's like the Kansas City Chiefs without. Oh gosh. I thought someone was going to say Jackson County. <laughs> no, joking. Bad deal. Bad deal. Okay. Okay. Or Taylor Swift, maybe. <laughs> anyway. Amen. Now that I've got your worked up, amen. We pray that you have your words with you. These things will fail one day. And we've got to be able to have that word with us. And what happens when these fail and the enemy shows up and challenges you on what you know about Scripture? You won't be able to say, hey, Liz, can you pull that Scripture up for me? You've got to have it here. Have it, have it in your heart. Have it with you. Amen? Amen. Now it came to pass after these things that God had tested Abraham. And he said to him, Abraham. And he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, who you love. And go to the land of Moriah. And offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering. And arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Can we pause? This moved really quickly for me. I have questions. <laughs> Anybody else got questions right now? First of all, let me tell you who Isaac is. I know that you know the scripture, you know the story of Isaac, you already know this. I just want to, for those of us who may not know, man, man, who Isaac is, I'll tell you. Isaac was a blessing. He was a gift. In, in modern terms, some people would say, he wasn't even supposed to be here, but God made a miracle happen. So here Isaac is, a miracle child, given to Abraham and Sarah. And the Lord tells Abraham to offer him up as a burnt offering. Did you see in the text where Abraham said, God, are you crazy? I mean, <laughs> who would fault him for asking that question, right? God, are you sure? My Isaac, the one that you gave me at an older age, the miracle child, the one that people even doubted could come, the one that my wife said, God, are you sure? I'm of an age where I can't bear children. And yet she did. I'd like to hear the conversation between Abraham and Sarah. I'd like to hear that conversation. I'd, I'd love to hear Abraham tell Sarah, hey, honey, God just told me to go ahead and, you know, offer up Isaac. <laughs> Pause. Do you, first of all, know what I went through <laughs> to conceive this child, to carry this child, and wait, there's more, to birth this child? Don't you touch my baby. If you lay a hand on him, you won't have hands anymore. That is my baby, God. That's all of my preacher imagination. None of that's written in the text. I'm just imagining things. But I have a wife. Who, who gave birth to three children. And I beg of you not to bother her children. Do not bother her babies. And let alone tell her that God told you to. Because then you and God might have some issues to deal with. And that's bigger than me. Anyway, amen. Abraham says, okay, let's get up. He rose, he took two others, and he took him, Isaac, 
to the place of which God told him. And then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw a place afar off. And Abraham said to the young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I, watch this, will go yonder, watch this, and worship. I know what the Lord said to Abraham, and it sure wasn't worship. It was sacrifice. It was burnt offering. But it's interesting the way that Abraham communicated with God. Abraham understood that God was calling him to worship. That's difficult to understand. That's hard to embrace when you're telling me to take the gift that you gave me, the miracle child that you gave me, and to offer him up to you, and you call it worship? Hmm. And we will come back to you. And we will come back to you. That's what Abraham said to the two young men. We're going to worship. We're coming back. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. I can see AJ right now. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father. And he said, here am I, son. Then he said, look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? We have everything we need but the lamb. We got a problem. We've got issues, San Juan. We, 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 we need a sacrifice. Where is the sacrifice? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together and they, they come to see a place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Have you ever been blessed by God? Anybody? Don't be shame. <laughs> ever been blessed? Have you ever been blessed tremendously? I mean, I mean, have you ever been in a place to where God blessed you with the impossible? Maybe God has given you something, blessed you with something that you've prayed and asked for. Has he taken it away? Can you imagine God giving you something that you didn't even believe you could handle? You didn't even have room enough to receive such a blessing, but he gave it to you. And then he asks for it back. What better blessing than a child? He gave you a child, and now he's asking for that child back. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here am I. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked 
And there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up. He didn't waste time, guys. <laughs> Don't waste time. When God gives you a way out, don't. When God gives you the green light, don't ask your counselor, don't go to your confidant, don't go to your best friend, don't go to, no, don't go to tarot cards, none of that. Just do, oh, somebody, <laughs> I know what we do, come on now. When God gives you that plan B, take it. God, are you sure? I don't, I don't want to, are you sure this is, <laughs> you're wasting time. God spared you. You don't have time to waste. There's a ram in the bush. There's a ram caught in coincidentally just just by oops oh there's a ram in the bush God is a master strategist don't do that y'all gonna get me too excited in here okay he, he's a master strategist And if you, if you watch Abraham's words, ooh, <laughs> this, is, this is really good to me. I'm trying to help somebody. Listen, you ready for this? Be careful what you say. In a fit of rage and frustration. Because Abraham's words were, God will find exactly what he needs. We're going to go worship and we'll be back. He could have said, guys, pray for my strength. I'm losing my mind. I don't know what to do. This is what God told me to do, but I'm... He didn't do that. He trusted God. He trusted God to be exactly who he said he would be. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Do I have a witness in here that God will never leave you? He will never forsake you. No matter how ugly or dark it is in your life, he will never leave you or forsake you. The Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The trouble is we keep looking outside at midnight. We're confused because we look outside at midnight. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Understand that when you're looking out at midnight, it's still dark, but it's morning. <laughs> it's morning time, even though it's dark. It's still morning. Even though it's dark right now, it's still morning. And joy has to come in the morning. I get that it's dark right now. I understand that you can't see everything you want to see right now, but the clock has strike 12. It's morning time. Even though I'm seeing scary things, Cast your weight on the fact that it's morning time. Understand this. Abraham was challenged to trust God and to worship God to do something that God was willing to do for him. Did you make that connection? Did you see that in the text? Isaac is Abraham's only son. Christ is God's only son. Christ was slayed for us. Isaac was 
ready to be slayed for the relationship and the worship. God asked Abraham to do something that he could do. But he spared him. There was a ram caught in the thicket. Look at your neighbor and say, look for the ram. Look for the ram. Tell your neighbor, say, look for the ram. Find the ram. The ram is near. If you don't look for the ram, you'll, you'll keep looking over it. In fact, my prayer, if, if, if I were you, God, where is the ram? Because I surely believe that there's got to be a ram somewhere. There's got to be a ram somewhere. He took the ram and he sacrificed it. Because God provided. Amen? And there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket of its horn. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Jehovah, anybody? Anyone know? Jehovah what? Come on, Bible readers. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. <laughs> Take a staple and place it in that space in your life where God has provided for you and make a name for it. Remember the ram that God provided for you. Remember how God continues to show up for you. Remember how you deserved the worst. I mean, I think all of us in here can bear testimony to that. Had it not been for Christ, we would be that sacrifice. Right? Understand that Christ as the sacrificial lamb paid the debt that we couldn't pay. He stepped in our place and took on sin that we committed. That's why it should be difficult to keep living the way you want to live. That's why it should be difficult to say the things you just want to say. Because someone died for that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Every time you think about stepping out of line, somebody died for that. Ooh, that's so good. Every time you think about getting a bath, mm -mm, somebody died for that. Every time I just got to get the last, I got to let them know how, mm -mm. someone died for that. And that someone left us not comfortless. He left us with the Holy Spirit. That can do more good work when we are silent, especially when we're angry and frustrated. The Bible didn't say we can't be angry. The Bible says be angry and sin not. One of the easiest sins to, to commit is... Oof. It's real easy. I'm going to just say it like I feel it. Y'all know I just keep it real. No, that's rude. Real and rude are two different... Th Amen. Amen. Lord, use me as only you can. I want to speak of your will and your way. Everything that I say, let it be reflective of you. Every conversation that I host, let it glorify you. Every commitment that I make, let it be committed in you. Let me ask myself three questions before I say yes. Is it glorifying God? Is it magnifying God? And is it building his kingdom? If I can say yes, count me in. But if I can't, I have to find out why I'm there. What are we here to do? Just that. Draw all men to him. I'm closing. But I want to share this piece of reality with you. Maybe you're in this sanctuary today. 
and maybe you're in a very dark place in your life. I've been doing this long enough to know that you can't judge a person by what they look like. People can come in here and smell great, look great, sound great, and all that, and be just a disaster on the inside. I know that to be true. Can I tell you something? Whatever it is, this dark space, allow it to be your breeding ground. Allow it to be your place of rebirth. You are a seed. Did you know that? You're a seed. And in order for a seed to blossom, it has to be in a dark space, Sue. I hope this is helping somebody. The seed has to go under soil. And it may feel like you've been buried unto death, but you've been buried with a promise because the rain is coming. And it takes that dark space coupled with rain and sunshine. And all of a sudden, the very ones that were happy that you got buried are gonna look up and see you blossoming. And if it had not been for that dark space, you wouldn't blossom. So thank God for the opportunity to be under the soil, to get all the nutrients that you need. No distractions, no disruptions. It's just you and God. Get in your word, get in your worship, and get ready to blossom. The test has been turned into your testimony. No test, no testimony. God bless you.